Never mind our adorable daughter, but I'll have to see your face so much from next week that I'll probably grow tired of it. Doesn't have to be a video call, right? My husband, who is currently on a business trip, turned off the camera as soon as the video call with our daughter ended. Lately, he has been distant like this towards me. Despite feeling hurt, I continued the conversation and asked him about the flight schedule for next week and made arrangements for his pickup. The conversation quickly ended. Well, I'm going to hang up now. Good night. Yeah, yeah, good night. Just as she was about to hang up after hearing her husband's response, she heard him say these words. All right, it's safe now. Hey, you can come back to this room. It seems like my husband mistakenly thought the call had ended. Upon overhearing the conversation between him and another person, I made up my mind to send him to hell. My name is Alice. I am a 34-year-old working woman. I met my husband Dominic at the company where we both worked when we were single. We were colleagues in the same department, and as we got along well both professionally and personally, we fell in love and started dating. In our second year of dating, Dominic proposed to me, and I happily accepted. Both of our parents were thrilled, and even our mutual boss blessed us. We had a blissful wedding. Afterward, I became pregnant quickly. To prepare for parenthood, I resigned from my job right after giving birth so I could work from home. Since then, I have been working from home as a self-employed individual, while Dominic continued to work at his original company. Our daughter, Emma, was born during that time. Dominic lifted the newborn Emma and said the following, She's so adorable. Alice, thank you for giving birth to such a cute daughter. <laughs> it seems like you're already proudly displaying your parental affection. What's wrong with that? Emma, I'm your daddy. While witnessing such a scene, I truly felt that marrying Dominic was the best decision I had ever made, from the bottom of my heart. In fact, he was quite cooperative when it came to childcare. He didn't do much housework, but it seemed like he found Emma exceptionally adorable. He took the initiative in handling tasks like feeding her milk and changing diapers. Emma, who was like that, is now five years old this year. She attends kindergarten and with Dominic's gentle care, she has grown into a lovely little princess. Since two years ago, Dominic has been on a solo assignment in another region. It seems Dominic had reservations about being separated from Emma but couldn't go against the company's decision. Reluctantly, he complied. Initially, I also had concerns about my husband, who was a partner in parenting, going far away. However, my parents at home encouraged me by offering their support, and my in-laws who live nearby said the following. Alice, while Dominic is away, If you have any problems or difficulties, don't hesitate to rely on us. My father-in-law is physically imposing and has a stern appearance. To put it bluntly, he looks intimidating. According to my husband, he used to be quite a strict person being a former police officer. So even now, Dominic isn't very comfortable around his father. However, my father-in-law has always been kind to both me and Emma, and I've considered him to be a wonderful person. On the other hand, his mother-in-law is gentle and calm. To us, Alice is a precious daughter, and Emma is our beloved granddaughter. While Dominic is away, we'll do anything we can to help. I cherished my mother-in-law just as much as my own mother. Emma also considers Dominic's parents as her grandparents. With their help, I felt that I could endure my husband's two-year solo assignment. That's what I believed. And now Dominic is entering his second year of being away on assignment. He will be returning here in three more months. Both Emma, Dominic, and I were looking forward to it eagerly. And at that moment, Emma was having her usual video call with Dominic. Daddy, today I played a lot with my friends from kindergarten. That's great, Emma. On the other side of the video call, my husband was still completely smitten with Emma. But Daddy, one of my friends had a Cinderella doll and I want one too. I see, I see. I'll buy one for you right away. I hurriedly interjected, saying, Wait a minute. I just bought her a toy the other day because she kept asking for it. I've been meaning to say this for a while, but please, don't just give in and buy everything she asks for. While it may sound like I'm spoiling Emma when I dote on her, there are times when it seems like he's just indulging our daughter too much from my perspective. He ends up buying her whatever she likes and easily indulges our daughter's whims. Just recently, he bought her a makeup set, 
that cost over $130 just because Emma wanted it, even though she's still too young for it. At that moment, Dominic wore an unhappy expression during the video call. What's the big deal? It's just something small like that. Don't you think Emma is cute? Of course she's adorable. That's exactly why we need to teach her some restraint. You're being too strict with Emma, don't you think? Dominic and I had somehow started a minor argument without realizing it. That's when Emma interrupted saying, Mom and Dad, don't fight! I don't need the Cinderella doll, just get along, okay? As Emma sniffled, I quickly apologized, but Dominic still seemed dissatisfied. See, you make Emma cry like this. Are you some kind of monster? Let's stop this in front of Emma. We'll talk later over the phone. No need for you to call later, especially not for Emma. Goodbye, Emma. Daddy will be back soon. I sighed and ended the video call. Lately, Dominic and I haven't been getting along well. The main cause of our arguments has been our differing approaches to Emma's upbringing. But besides that, I feel like Dominic has become distant from me in some way. In the early days of his assignment, he used to have long phone conversations with me even after Emma had fallen asleep. But that has also dwindled away. Nowadays, he only engages in video calls with Emma, and it seems like talking to me is a burden for him. He used to be such a good husband and a good father. Is there some reason behind this change? Can we go back to being the happy couple we once were when he returns? I had started to think like that without realizing it. This happened two weeks before Dominic's solo assignment was about to end. As usual, Emma and Dominic were having a video call. I had some household chores that required my attention, so I wasn't listening to their conversation. After finishing the video call, Emma happily rushed over to me. You know, Daddy said he's going to buy what I want. Huh? Again? Dominic seems to be planning to buy another toy. I asked Emma with a sigh. Emma, you should stop asking Daddy for everything. So what did you ask for this time? <laughs> you see? I asked Daddy for a little brother or sister. Huh? The stork is going to bring a little brother or sister real soon. Just wait, you'll see. Yay! Certainly, Emma had been saying things like this lately. However, due to Dominic's solo assignment and our age, we had no plans to have more children. So to readily agree to something like this, I immediately called Dominic. Hello, what's up? In response to somewhat grumpy husband, I calmly told him. Emma told me, did you really agree to her wanting a little brother or sister? Oh, uh, well... Dominic's voice sounded a bit awkward. No, that's not okay. We've already decided that we're not having any more children, right? Well, I mean, it was just a figure of speech. Anyway, don't give her false hope. I'll make sure to clarify things with Emma myself. There was silence from Dominic on the other end of the call. I spoke up to him in response. Hey, are you even listening? Ugh, shut up. Don't interfere in the promise between me and Emma. Huh? It's your casual attitude that's at fault here. Seriously, you're just so unlikable. That's why I can't stand it. I'm fed up with the idea of living with you again. Come on, don't say it like that. I'm going to hang up. Don't call me unless you have a reason. My husband said those cold words and hung up the phone. I was left to ponder Dominic's words, feeling down. And then the following week, Dominic and Emma had their usual video call. Emma dear, Daddy will be back next week, okay? Really? Yay! I was listening to this conversation next to Emma. When their conversation ended, I addressed the video call screen. Dominic, I have something to talk about. Then Dominic turned off the camera and switched to a regular voice call. Emma aside, I'm going to see your face as much as I hate to next week, so it's a voice-only call, okay? I was hurt, but proceeded with the conversation. I asked about the flight time for next week in a business-like manner, arranged for the pickup, and the conversation quickly ended. Well then, I'll hang up. Good night. Yeah, sure. Good night. Dominic said this, and I was about to hang up, but a few seconds later, I heard a voice like this. It's all right now. Hey, you can come back to this room. At that moment, a question mark suddenly crossed my mind. Was my husband with someone else? I've been waiting long enough. 
I heard an unfamiliar, sweet, and high-pitched woman's voice from the other end of the call. Dominic thinks he hung up the call? No. More importantly, could he have brought a woman to his apartment during his business trip? With trembling hands, I operated my phone and pressed the record button for the call. You seem to be having a lively conversation with your wife, and it makes me jealous. Hey, hey, I'm only having official communication with my wife. Can't be helped. Our conversation echoed in the background along with some rustling sounds. By the way, you will be returning to your family soon, won't you? It's what the company decided. I wish I could be with you more. All you do is lie. You can't wait to see your daughter. Well, Emma is such an adorable daughter. If you remarry me, you're going to love Emma too, okay? I was taken aback, my hand covering my mouth. Remarry? Adore Emma? What are these two talking about? By the way, do you think the divorce will go smoothly? She's strict with Emma. Even if it goes to court, I can use that as an advantage. I'll get custody of Emma. Then you, Mira, can move here and we can get remarried. That sounds good. I'll prepare for it so I can become Emma's mom too. Speaking of which, Emma mentioned wanting a little brother or sister. Really? In that case, we should prepare for that too. Then Dominic and Mira began their sleazy antics on the other end of the phone. While recording the unbearable audio, I trembled with anger. They not only betrayed me, but also planned to take Emma away from me. I will never forgive them. I will beat these people to hell. I clutched my phone with trembling hands. I couldn't sleep that night. I shed tears while watching Emma sleep peacefully. But I knew I had to become strong to protect Emma. I made up my mind to face this alone. The very next day, I started taking action immediately. I called his former boss, Luke, who has supported him during his single days. Hey, it's been a while. Are you doing well? Luke, it's been a long time. I have a few questions to ask. Through Luke, I learned about something important. Once that was settled, I immediately contacted my family and explained the situation to them. My family was surprised, but willingly accepted my proposal. And finally, I headed to my in-law's house. One week later, I entrusted Emma to my family and waited at home. I heard the sound of the door opening and Dominic entered. Hey, why are you ignoring my calls? We had an agreement that you'd pick me up at the airport, right? Dominic shouted at me while carrying his suitcase. As he entered the room, he looked around and asked, Where's Emma? I was looking forward to seeing her. Where is she? Just sit down here. We need to talk. I calmly told him, and reluctantly, my husband sat down across from the dining table. So, what's this about? You were having an affair while on your business trip, weren't you? Wh what Dominic's gaze suddenly started to wander. I continued matter-of-factly. So, what's the truth? Were you having an affair? W what are you talking about? You're just making things up. I remained silent and started to play the recorded audio from that day on my phone. Dominic's face turned pale instantly. Huh? What is this? You thought you had hung up, but you hadn't. Thanks to that, I collected enough evidence. Now admit it with your own words. Finally, Dominic decided to come clean. Oh, that's right. I found a cute girlfriend over there. Younger and with a better personality than you. You're no longer of any use to me. Leave Emma and get the hell out of here. In the next moment, the door to the room, leading to the living room, burst open. As Dominic saw the person standing there, his eyes widened like saucers. There, my father-in-law, mother-in-law, and his boss, Luke, were present. D dad and Mom, and Luke, why are you all here? You stupid son. My father-in-law shouted briefly and then approached Dominic. He grabbed Dominic by the collar and executed a perfect throw, slamming Dominic onto the floor. Dominic's eyes rolled in pain. Hey, Dad, why are you suddenly doing this? It hurts. What are you doing, you idiot? You betrayed Alice, who had been working hard to raise your child while you were away. Don't you feel ashamed for indulging in affairs while she was like, giving her all? W well, that's... it couldn't be helped. Everyone makes mistakes, right? At that moment, my mother-in-law interjected sharply. Mistake? No, this is a blatant betrayal. 
With a son like you, I can't face Alice and her family. M Mom? Calm down. Isn't it fine to cast off a wife like this? Dominic desperately appealed to his parents. Even if we get divorced, I'll still get custody. You both can continue to dote on Emma just like before. I'll bring a better wife than this old hag. Then my mother-in-law delivered a powerful slap to him in silence. After a moment of silence, it was his boss, Luke, who spoke next. Dominic, I investigated it. And it seems your affair partner is Mira, one of the office clerks at the branch, right? Rumors about this have been circulating for a while. What? The company is considering serious consequences. Be prepared for possible termination. Th this can't be. Cornered, Dominic finally turned to me for support, with my in-laws and Luke glaring at him. I'm sorry, Alice. Please, forgive me. I'll settle things with her, and from now on, let's live together as a family of three. See? Everything will work out fine. I pushed Dominic away and shouted loudly. You've got to be kidding me. I'm getting a divorce from you. I'll demand alimony from both of you, so just wait for it. Of course, I'll have custody. After betraying the family with your infidelity, there's no way you can raise Emma, right? No, I can't live without Emma. Please. Don't ever show that face to me again, you scumbag. With those words, my father-in-law grabbed Dominic by the collar and silently dragged him to the front door. My mother-in-law repeatedly lowered her head to me and I received kind encouragement from Luke. Later on, Dominic and I got divorced. He sought custody of Emma, which led to mediation, but due to my track record in raising her and evidence of his infidelity, custody quickly became mine. Subsequently, I also demanded alimony from Dominic and Mira. Since both of them had been fired from their jobs, they paid it from their savings, which apparently left them with nothing. They blamed each other and eventually broke up. My father-in-law promised to ensure that Dominic paid child support, and he threw Dominic onto a friend's tuna fishing boat. Dominic is now earning Emma's child support while working on the boat. On the other hand, I returned to my parents' house with Emma, and I'm leading a peaceful life. Emma doesn't seem too concerned about her separation from her father, as long as she has her mother. For now, I feel relieved. However, I frequently introduce Emma to my in-laws, who love and cherish her. My daughter also loves them dearly. From now on, I will remember my debt to my in-laws for taking my side and to Luke for helping me. I want to live a happy life with Emma.